everybody, it's Aiden here once again and welcome back to the channel, or just welcome in general for those of you who are first timers, as it's time to put on the smooth jazz and enter the paddock of chat on another episode of Pressing Issues. Now unlike my other real world motorsport series story time where I tell things exactly as they happen, Pressing Issues is where I leave sim racing aside for a moment to really say what I like on a subject with no filtering mechanism whatsoever. So what has happened in recent days or hours for me to do another episode of Pressing Issues? Well, it's the signing of George Russell to Williams, and who should get the second seat? Well, at the time this goes up it would have been a week since George Russell was signed, but I've been at the NEC most of this week so time has been short. So looking at it from the outside, we have four real contenders and some joke candidates that some people actually want in the second seat. So we'll look at these drivers and see what pros and cons they've got and try and put it all together into some sort of neat little package at the end. Now being a Williams fan anyway, personal opinions are going to be everywhere in this video, but that's what pressing issues is all about. Now beginning the three main candidates, I may as well start with the driver that is currently in the second seat, and that is Sergei Sorotkin the Russian driver that is in no way related to the politician of the same name. Now Sorokin got his break in Formula 1 four years after he almost had a breakthrough with the Sauber team. As part of an investment deal from three Russian firms, the plan was to hand the then 17 year old driver a seat in 2014 with some sort of super intensive development program to get him ready. Now I'm just picturing that training montage from Rocky IV with the Soviet dude hooked up to all those machines and making GUNS! Unfortunately, Samba went with Sutil and Gutierrez for 2014, but Sorotkin still tested at Bahrain and Sochi. Sorotkin ran alongside Robert Kubica in a 2017 test at Abu Dhabi and set times, corrected for tyre offset deltas, that were actually quicker than the poles. Williams were impressed with his feedback and Cyril irritable that Renault was also impressed. Every single time he was in the car, I can tell you we were very impressed by his technical feedback, he said. The fact he wants to be extremely exhaustive makes him a very useful person. Although Kubica had averaged quicker than Massa's race stints, Sorotkin actually averaged quicker than both. He must have caused Sir Frank some major headaches. Sorotkin also brings money from SMP Racing which will ease financial worries. Now unfortunately Sorotkin hasn't really had the car to show what he can be capable of this year, so an extra year may be beneficial to him. And what has Williams got to lose in that aspect? Now apparently he's also got a degree in engineering, so would you take that plus experience to help Russell, or go with contender number two? Esteban Ocon. Now this is a name that's been thrown around a lot in the last few days, because it seems certain, although not yet confirmed, that Lance Stroll will be going to Force India or whatever the hell they're called now. Now according to ESPN, Ocon is still on Williams' radar. Like Russell, Ocon is a Mercedes junior, but it looks likely he will lose his seat at Force India due to Lawrence Stroll owning the team. And Perez has not only outscored the Frenchman, he's also bringing in the dollar dollar. Now at the time of this recording, it seems that Perez has actually re-signed for Force India, so Ocon's chances of still staying are now minimal. Williams has even said that they would be stupid not to have a look at him. With Mercedes supplying engines, having two drivers that are young and got the talent and potential to do well, it would be good for Williams to build a new team around them. Even if Sergei was bumped down to development for Ocon to have the second seat, Sergei's eye for detail would allow Esteban to get on with the driving. While undoubtedly a talent, the problem with Ocon is his backing. He hasn't got a lot of it, that is compared to people like Perez and the like. Will Williams in their current situation be wanting to take that risk? Hard to tell. It's a difficult one and I'd love for your feedback in the comments section. Although Ocon currently is still a Mercedes Junior, so if Toto wants to get out the checkbook, there is still a chance. And I do hope Ocon gets a full-time drive, even if he has to get out of the Mercedes program and go to Toro Rosso or something. Next up, Robert Kubica. <laughs> oh wait, you serious? Let me laugh even harder. <laughs> Now if you've been on the Williams Facebook page in the last 12 months, it's been inundated with fanboys with their stupid hashtags and bitching and moaning about giving Kibitza a seat. I can't see it happening. 
even if this rumoured sponsor deal from a Polish petrol company is coming about. Kibitza has been out of a Formula 1 drive for 7 years or so since a rally accident partially severed his right arm. You can even see it in photographs that his right arm is wasted away compared to his other one. Sure, he's been out testing, but one or two test sessions in a year isn't the same as 21 races, especially with the three back-to-back -back ones we saw this year. There's no guarantee he can keep it up. I know a lot of Polish fans want him back, but there are so many deluded enough to think he's still the same driver he was 10 years ago. But you need to face it. He isn't. If I was Frank or Claire, I would not pick him for a full-time role. It would be great publicity, a good marketing exercise, but if his performance is going to be really inconsistent, then pff, what's the point? If you're Polish and watching this, you're probably going to be upset, as a lot of them are currently after all the crying hashtags and abuse thrown at Williams in the last 12 months still hasn't given him a full-time drive. In fact, there was one guy who would always demand Kibitza be given a full-time drive and anyone that disagreed with him was blocked because they weren't as deluded. All the people on the Williams Facebook page demanding Kibitza be given a seat aren't Williams fans or F1 fans. They're just on a bandwagon. And I know better than the Rio Harianto fans that all appeared out of nowhere thinking he was the dog's bollocks. Kibitza is not the same driver he was 10 years ago. He's missing an arm and was slower than Sorotkin. There are those that think he's better than Hamilton, Vettel and Alonso. He isn't. Rosberg was better than Kibitza was, and that's saying something. There are those that reckon he'll be finishing top 5 in the 2018 car. Sorry, but you're on another planet and whatever you're smoking, I'd love some. I hope Kibitza goes with Stroll to force India so the fanboys fuck off from the Williams social media page. And speaking of Lance Stroll, he's on a multi-year deal with Williams. There's every possibility he could let that run out, knowing there'll be a spot at Force India afterwards, allowing Ocon to keep a seat, at least for 12 months. But it's pretty much a done deal. But anything can happen in Formula 1, and it usually does. Now, One of the hilarious options that was thrown into the mix was Mick Schumacher, a driver nobody gave a shit about six months ago, but now everybody's on his bandwagon since he started winning F3 races overnight. Now here's the thing with Mick Schumacher. He's going to be coming in with massive pressure to be like his dad. He needs to carve out his own career and let that take him wherever instead of thinking he needs to end up at Ferrari because F1 needs a Schumacher on the grid. That was then, this is now. Nostalgia is one hell of a drug and most Formula 1s are injecting it straight into their eyeballs. Mick is not ready for F1. Yet. He's had an average kart career, he had an average F4 career, Lando Norris made him look like an amateur last year, and late this year he finally started winning races. Give him at least a year in F2, and then reevaluate. So who would I choose? It's a difficult one, but since Stroll to Force India is a done deal, although not confirmed, it's a toss up between Sorotkin and Ocon to partner Russell and I've got no idea who to choose. Stroll, Kibitza and Schumacher are not on my shortlist, so picking is a very, very difficult task here. They've both got pros, they've both got cons. Hmm. Difficult. Leave your opinions below. Even though I can't choose, it will probably be Sorotkin. That will mean Ocon won't have a drive for at least 12 months, but then again, seats in F1 are about as secure as a Hyman in a South Lincolnshire Comprehensive. So that's pretty much it on my opinions of what to do with the Williams team. Like I said, leave your opinions below and let's get a conversation going. So until next time, I've been Ada Milward, have a great day wherever you are, and I'll see you all again very soon. Goodbye. <laughs>